Fiji changed the way we look at 24th April. When we came for the first time, it was decided that it's not going to be a day of mourning and crying and lamenting and you know, recollecting all the past, but it will be a day of celebration that it happened. Not that it is over, but it has happened to us. And we will celebrate it every year, year after year, by doing more in the holy name of Bhagawan Sri Satya Sai Baba in order to continue his legacy of love and service. And I think Fiji has lived up to this promise for this day. And every year they have been only doing more than what they had done the previous year. And this is how what Tigrid said was perfectly right. How these few op operations, not too many in number, 200, but they have changed the way the culture of Fiji was and now is. And the same thing is happen happening in Sri Lanka, the same thing is happening in the US, and the same thing will happen in Turkey, and in many, many more places of the world, where people will get united again because they will transcend the limitations of us versus them. And they will all join together to celebrate this legacy of love and service. And that is the greatest gift we can give back to our master. In India, there is this concept of Guru Dakshina. You have to give something back to the master. What can we give? When we ask ourselves, the only thing that we can really think of is to do what he did all our lives and which is to love and which is to serve. It's in big bold letters, love all and serve all. That's what we have got to do and that's what we are doing. And as long as we do this, we truly will remain grateful disciples of our master. Otherwise nothing else can match up to his grace, his benevolence on us, but to live his legacy all our lives by serving and loving just as he did. See, as human beings we need examples. We want to see people who could do that so that we, could, uh, we can also try doing that. And I am just an example made to do all that which all of us are expected to do. And it is simply to say if he can do it, we can also do it. And that is the idea of why placing a guru. It was given to Sumit. Many such difficult tasks are given to Sumit often. But it was given to him to tell the world that now onwards he will be here as a Sadguru to take us forward on this path. And he did that fearlessly, selflessly and shamelessly. That is to teach us that it is possible. And it can be done by anybody who decides to follow this path. Irrespective of which country you belong to, which religion, which philosophy you subscribe to, which language you speak, and what is your educational economic status. Irrespective of all that, we can follow this path of selfless love and service. So this day was, is, and will always be about celebrating selfless love and service by doing more and more in the name of our Master so that more and more people are transformed. And the world truly becomes one family, united in love, united in service. I often talk about this story from the Upanishads, Mundaka Upanishad. For those who are new, two birds were sitting on a tree, the Upanishad says. Both looked alike, of the same plumage, of the same species. One bird was eating the fruits, the berries on the tree, bitter and sweet. So whenever it ate a berry which was sweet, it rejoiced. It was happy. And whenever it came across a bitter berry, it lamented and was sad. And this went on and on till it looked up and saw the other bird sitting up high there, high up there peacefully, without eating any berries but just being a witness, enjoying itself. And this bird, the lower bird thought, why can't I be like that upper bird, which is so happy, which is so peaceful, 
unlike me which is happy on monday and sad on tuesday and again happy on the wednesday and sad on thursday this goes on in my life why can't i be like that equanimous peaceful and happy forever and then it started wanting to become that bird and it hopped from one branch to the other and as it got closer and closer to the upper bird it realized there was no upper bird there was no there were no two birds in the first place there was only one bird one bird was the witness consciousness the upper one and one was this engaged with the worldly things trying to enjoy the world and but at the end it was the same bird and not two that is what the upanishads tell they tell when the little bird the lower bird thought of itself as just the lower bird it was unhappy it was limited in its thinking it was finite but when it reached the upper branch and became one or rather realized that it was one with the upper bird it had no more longing for a good and bad things of life it had given up all pursuits except the pursuit of truth and peace and that is the story of today when narasimha murthy gave a vivid description of what happened it was just that the lower bird was busy picking berries happy and sad on different days and then the upper bird came and gave a knock on the head hey up here i sit peaceful and equanimous do you want to be like me do you want to enjoy this peace and equanimity if yes then rise branch by branch i don't expect you to all of a sudden hop up to the topmost branch but step by step year after year week after week it taught how to go and become the upper bird and that is what we are all supposed to do and the steps to do is selfless love and selfless service these are the surest steps and that's all we are expected to do i know people are watching this program from around the world and from different time zones and to all of them the only message is this life's pursuit is to be one with that upper bird and that upper bird was represented by bhagwan shri satya sai baba the paramatma and the lower bird illusory lower bird is represented by the jivatma this limited thinking that we are different and the day we understand that we are one and the same there are no two birds left so if you ask me today many people ask me so what happened to bhagwan shri satya sai baba where is he and i'd ask them where is he not he is everywhere in you me as you as me and as everything else animate and inanimate because there were no two birds in the first place it was one and only consciousness the witness which animates powers governs energizes all of us everything we do we think feel speak act is because of that one power one energy one divinity and that is that one bird that we all are and as long as we think we are different we will be plunged into these days of sorrows and days of happiness but the day we realize there is only one divinity which is common to all of us which is that one and the only bird sitting on this tree of life we will be freed of all limitations and we will become infinite so this mission is all about helping us hop from one branch to another till we realize that there is only one bird that one divinity that permeates pervades everything and this service this mission of service is just the method the process of doing that so the more you involve with selfless service the more you love people selflessly the faster you realize that you are the same bird and not two there is no australian bird no new zealand bird no fijian bird no indian bird you are all that one bird that one divine consciousness and that is the message that is the truth and that is what we are here to realize so my job is the job of a teacher very painful <laughs> it demands a lot to be a teacher and to teach everyone patiently and everybody has their own pace of learning their own understanding of things their perspectives but to all of them i have to teach the same lesson what i have learned there are no two there is only one we all have to learn but nobody believes it in the beginning because we are so different from each other that it's hard to believe that we are actually one 
But that is the truth. And to teach this truth, I take this method of selfless service. Because when we serve, we feel for the other person. In that feeling of kindness and compassion, somewhere we get united. Somewhere you are no more a Fijian Fijian or an Indian Fijian. Somewhere you are not a Singhali Sri Lankan and a Tamil Sri Lankan. Somewhere you are not an African American and an American American. You become one. This is how this service will unite the world. And this is the method of our master. And this is what we are all here to do. So on this day, we have to only recommit ourselves, rededicate ourselves and promise ourselves that we will continue this legacy of love and service through which we will realize that we are not different but we are just that one bird, one and the same consciousness. That is the journey, that is the destination. And I'm so happy that in Fiji, I have seen the transformation happen. People in the initial days were definitely as apprehensive were afraid and they were happy picking their berries but they were not happy climbing the branch up. They were comfortable sitting on their own branch and they were only going by what was happening around them and they didn't ever look up. They never looked up to see there is something else there. And I remember I was telling Mahenji as we were driving by, the, by one of the venues when we, the early satsangs used to happen in 2015-16, a hall full of people, 500, 600 of them. And today, 50, maybe 50, you can count them all. But they have done much more work because these are the birds which chose to rise. And those are the birds who decided to stay, eat berries bitter and sweet. And these birds who decided to climb, decided to go up on the tree, they are the ones who are truly the disciples. And this is what makes me happy. Every time I come back to Fiji, I meet all these people, this small group of them. Now some of them have joined them, joined them from New Zealand, from Australia and other places. And these are those birds, which will prove to the world that there was never two. There was only one. Two was an illusion. We were always one. And this is given to us. And look at that. I just read what, what is written under Nelson Mandela's picture. His quote, sometimes it falls upon a generation to be great. You can be that generation. Sometimes it falls upon a group to be great. You are that group. You have to prove to the world that we are all one. And that is our way. And I, I want to convey to all of you that every time I go to any country, I always talk about Fiji. And I tell them in a small country, a small island nation, how this miracle of love is unfolding, how people are coming from different parts and benefiting from this selfless love. And yesterday, there were patients from Solomon Islands and also from another island, very difficult to pronounce, but another South Pacific island nation. And two children were being operated. And now they will go back and they will tell their friends and relatives and all those who are suffering that, you know what, there is a hospital in Fiji we can go there, we don't have to pay anything. They look after everything and we, our child will be all right. What, what, what greater good can we do in our master's name than to pass on this legacy of love to somebody? He may not remember you and me, he may not even remember our names and faces. It doesn't matter, but he will remember that love that the child experienced. That parent will remember and recollect the hope that we gave to them. That child will always be grateful for the good that he or she has received from us. So what if they re remember our names or not? It doesn't matter. But they will remember the good that they've experienced. And in that good, there is God. And that is what we are trying to teach the world. Do good and be God. That is my simplest formula. Do good and be God. Be that upper bird by continuously doing good day after day. May many more years of goodness be celebrated on 24th of April in Fiji. May we all remind ourselves of the greatness that lies ahead of us. The promise that we have made to ourselves to rise every day. Till we become one bird and not two. And that is our philosophy, that is our way. And I wish you all the very best on this journey. And I'm always there, pecking on you. Come on, come on. And we will rise together. And I will come back 
again and again to the lower branches to pick another bird and take it up. So I will be there around, don't worry, for a long time, till I make enough of you climb up those branches and make sure that you all become one with your true self. And that is my job and I'll be doing that. So I'm, I'm just trying to make it easy for me. So I asked Vinod this morning, if one thing you had to tell to the devotees, what would you say? You know what he said? Just follow whatever Swami says. <laughs> I said, that will make my job very easy. I won't have to repeat again and again. You know, so that, that's what he told. I think that's perfect. Just do what your master says. Follow the master. Face the devil. Fight till the end and finish the game. This is what we were told. And follow the master. Simple as that. The master says, love and serve. We simply love and serve. The master says, be fearless and selfless. We simply become fearless and selfless. When master says, do what I did, we simply do what he did. There's no questions asked. There are no discussions, no debates, no arguments. Everything ends there because the master has spoken. And his shall always be the final word in our lives. So with a lot of blessings and love, and to all the devotees from around the world who are watching this, I want to convey that we are all so, so blessed. It's not given to everyone. But as they say, with great blessings comes great responsibility to carry out this legacy of love and service. And we shall all rise together and we shall all realize together that we are one and not two. And that will be our greatest contribution to the humanity forever. So with these words, placing all our gratitude all of our lives at his feet, I conclude.